Thank you for joining us tonight. We are here to talk about the Westport Complete Streets project. My name is Sarah Brown, and I'm a <coughs> comprehensive planner at Serpin. I am joined tonight by my colleagues, Jackie Jones, a principal transportation planner, and Julian Griffiths, a transportation planning technician. Here's a brief overview of what's on our agenda for today. We will talk quickly about the following topics, and then we want to hear from you, the residents of Westport, to see what types of projects you are interested in seeing around town. What is a complete street? A complete street is a facility that safely and comfortably accommodates all users, regardless of age, inability, or mode of transportation. Uses include but are not limited to motorists, bicyclists, pedestrians, public transportation providers and riders, emergency response vehicles, freight operators, and bus and school buses. Here are the basics for the Mass Stock Complete Streets funding program. Tier one is adopting a Complete Streets policy. The town of Westport adopted their Complete Streets policy in February, 2019. Tier two is completing the five-year prioritization plan. Westport is currently on this tier. The next tier is tier three, which is applying for com construction funds. Every four years, Westport can apply for up to $400,000 in construction funding. Here is the eligible projects that can be applied for with the Complete Streets funding. So project types include intersection redesign, such as intersection reconstruction, addressing multimodal issues, street reconfiguration and traffic calming, such as lane narrowing, adding exclusive bike space, pedestrian crossing modifications, such as raised intersections or raised crosswalks, pedestrian and bicycle network connections, such as a shared use path or trail, transit improvements, such as bus pullouts, and environmental and streetscape improvements, such as bicycle parking. Here is four examples from around the circuit region. Um, places used this funding for bike lanes, fixing ADA compliant sidewalks and curb ramps, adding transit stops, and adding, having crosswalk upgrades, such as adding rapid rectangular flashing beacons. Ineligible projects are on state-owned roadways, design, permitting, emergency repairs, drainage-only projects, and routine maintenance, such as pothole patching and crack sealing. How is Serpent helping Westport? SERPA is helping Westport by going through their previous documents and reviewing what current, what current or previous plans state for complete streets and data compilation. So we went out in May, I mean, November, December last year, and we worked through each of the roadways and did some measurements. Then we used those measurements for the existing conditions evaluation. And with all that data, we are going to go through the project selection and prioritization, and this will lead to a final report, which is the needs assessment and a prioritization plan. This is our timeline for the project. We started in October 2021, and then in November and December, we did all of our field work, which is gathering all the data that we used for the upcoming maps. We have held two stakeholder meetings with the town. In April, we will be holding our draft prioritization plan meeting to go over the project list. And then we will wrap this all up in June of 2022. This will be the final deliverable for the project. It is one giant spreadsheet where we will enter all the projects for the plan. We will need to give the project basics such as name, description, and location. And then we will list which modes that these projects will serve, such as pedestrian, bicycle, or transit. We will then move the, into the project type, which, it, which will pick which type of project it is eligible for. 
Then we move into an assessment, such as does it serve a gap, a network gap? Is it a safe route to school or safe routes for seniors? Does it accomplish accessibility? And then finally, we'll do a cost estimate for each project. I'm now gonna go over a few maps. The first one shows the survey network. The roads in green are the roads that we went out and measured. We did a total of 85 miles in Westport. The image on the right is an example sheet that we brought out into the field showing the measurements that we gathered, which shows the lane widths, the total width of the roadway, where telephone poles are located, where stone walls are located. And then we also gathered if that roadway had street lighting, what the current feel of the roadway is, pavement condition, sidewalk condition, and then what type of land use. This map shows the pavement widths. We measure the pavement widths from the edge of the roadways. On the map, the bigger the line represents the wider roadways in town. The majority of the roadways are between 20 and 26 feet. We also looked at the pavement conditions and most of the roadways had either fair or good pavement with only less than a half a mile was in poor condition. This map shows the current bicycle and pedestrian accommodations for the roadways that we surveyed. We surveyed 6.8 miles of sidewalk and 2.7 miles were in poor condition. The majority of the sidewalks were on the left-hand side or the west side of the roadway. This map shows the locations of telephone poles and stone walls. We look at the telephone poles and stone wall locations to help us determine which side of the roadway is more feasible to add a sidewalk. About 41% of the roads we surveyed had stone walls. The green line on the map shows the roadways that have the stone walls. The yellow lines on the map show the roadways that the telephone poles switched back and forth frequently. And the purple and the pink lines show which side of the roadway the telephone poles are located. This map shows the crash locations between 2017 and 2019. We looked at the crash records for 2017, 2019, because these are the most recent years where all the records were closed. 2020 and 2021 records are still open and active. Between the time period, there were five fatal crashes and those are shown in the red dots. During this time, there were also three crashes that involved cyclists and seven crashes that involve pedestrians. And the list on, on the right-hand side is the top 10 intersection crash locations for this time period. So most of the crash locations are on, include state-owned roads. Now we're moving on to potential projects. We got these next two potential project lists from our stakeholder meeting. This first one is adding sidewalks on Oak County Road between the new high school and Route 88. We discussed this with the town and they thought this would be a good idea to help with the kids walking to and from school. The next potential project we talked about was a bike loop on Hor Horseneck Road, East Beach Road and Main Road. The town told us that these are active routes that people like to go bike down. Now I'm moving to the next steps. So you all joined us for tonight's presentation on existing conditions and project development. We'll be holding another public meeting in late April to go over the project list and rank the projects based on priority for the town. Between now and then, please feel free to visit our website. And on there, you, will, you can leave a comment or participate in one, of the, one or both of the two activities. This first activity is an intersection redesign activity of Main Road and Adamsville Road. For this activity, you can print out a PDF or download the PDF that's on our website. 
and you can draw out what you think this intersection should look like. You can include bike lanes, sidewalks, maybe tee off the intersection. You can draw however you think that this intersection should be in the future. Once you have finished your design, you can email it back to me and then we can incorporate it into the plan. I will show you where this lives on the website in a minute after I go over the next activity. The second exercise is the mapping exercise. For this, you can click the link on our website and you will be directed to an online map. And here you can add comments about pedestrians, bicyclists, transit, vehicles, and intersections. Here is where you can add your ideas for projects for this plan. After I head over to the website, I, we will open this activity and then we would like to hear from you, the residents of Westport, to see if you guys have any plans or areas where you think there should be improvements. Some things to think about when you're working on this activity is where do you think we can add a sidewalk? Where are there in need of ADA curb ramps? If there's some crosswalk upgrades, such as adding the rapid rectangular fashion beacons, or where are there common bicycle loops in town? So I'm gonna switch over to our website. And I'm gonna just go over the website briefly. All right, so when you log on to our website, it's serpent.org slash Westport Complete Streets. And Julian has posted it in the chat. Then you scroll down, we just have an intro page. And then on the right-hand side, we have our progress of where we are to date. So right now we have our virtual meeting and then ways to comment. We scroll down, we just have our latest news. So right now we have our poster shown right here. And then if you keep scrolling, we have our existing conditions meeting information. And then here are all the maps from tonight's presentation. You can click on them and it will just open a PDF and you can save them or print them. And then if you keep scrolling down to the participate and stay involved section, which you can also click the link at the top of the screen to be just brought here. You can submit a comment card using this form here. And this will stay anonymous. You can just add a comment. You don't have to add your name or email, but if you would like to, we can contact you. But if you don't wanna do it online, we do have a paper version and then you can email me. And then if you keep scrolling down, we have the interactive mapping exercise, which I'll open in a minute. And then we have our intersection redesign activity. So this is the link you'll click. If you just open that, it will bring you to that PDF and you can draw on here and then add additional comments if you would like. But we also have a measurement sheet. Me and Julian went out and measured this intersection. So we have what the widths of some of the roadway pieces are. So you can get an idea of how big this intersection is. Now we will get to our interactive mapping activity. But before we do that, does anybody have any questions? All right, I'll open up the activity. So when you click on this link for the mapping exercise, you are brought up with a pop-up box. And this is just some simple instructions. And if you forget how to do it, there's no worry. We have a link here that will bring you to a video of how to use this. You just click that X. And then on the left-hand side, we have the zoom in and zoom out feature. And if you accidentally move away from Westport, you can always click the home button and it will just bring you right back to the Westport extent here. If you don't know necessarily know where there's a location, you can click here and it will you can enter the address and it will zoom you right in. And then we have the legend. So on this map, it's just gonna be the points you add. And we have some simple trip generators in town, such as the beach, the library, the post office, the council on aging, town hall. And those are the small circles. And then your points will be shown up as rectangles with blue icons for pedestrian, bicycle, vehicle, transit and intersection. So to add a point, 
we have some points already on here from our stakeholder meeting. Let's add a point. You just click submit a comment and you press on the map where you would like to add your comment. But if you accidentally pressed it in the wrong spot, that's totally fine. You can just keep clicking till you find your spot or you can hit cancel and start again. So once you have your spot picked out, you can click category and you can select what type this is for. If it's adding a sidewalk, you can click pedestrian and then you can type your comment in this box. And the comment is the only thing required. The category and comment are the only two things required before you submit. But if you would like to add project limits, such as if you want to add a sidewalk on Hicks Bridge Road from Main to Route 88, you can add that here, saying from Main Road to Route 88. And then if you would like to add your name and email, you can, they will stay anonymous and then we'll be able to see it. And then another feature we have on here is you can comment on someone else's comment or you can like the comment. So to do that, you just click on what this one says. This one says they would like to have an improved sidewalk and that is located down here on Main Road. If you like that, you can click the little heart and then that will show that more than the one person agrees with this comment. But if say you had an additional comment, like you want to leave an extent, you can click here and say, you would like it to extend all the way up to Lee's Market. And then we'll know that people are interested in maybe having the sidewalk down here, but also at the, in the North part. So now I'd like to open it up to you guys and see if you have any comments or questions and we can have a discussion about the Complete Streets program. Okay, uh, this is Jim Whiten. And I have a question about your, your intersection at Adamsville and Main Road, mm -hmm. yep. your, your, your drone sky view. Um, is, I, think, um, I think this is a problem intersection. It has a lot of traffic. Um, and in the summers, you get eight or 10 cars piled up on Adamsville Road waiting to turn onto Main Road, both right and left. Um, and if you go back to that picture, yeah. uh, you see the, the three cars that are parked in that open area on the right. Yep. This business in the, with a big roof, the fish market seems to be redoing, uh, their property and they seem to be trying to make a parking area right where those cars are. I think that's right now during construction. And I think that must have been not too long ago with the snow on the ground. And I have a, a real safety issue with people coming south on Main Road and turning onto Adamsville Road. If people are gonna be backing out into the traffic, do you provide any safety best practices information, or do we just say that this is a problem and then we know it's a problem? Um, Jackie, do you, do you have a comment? Sure. Um, so in this type of scenario um, where you have one of these Y intersections, uh, they found that it's a lot safer to have a more perpendicular T-style intersection. So for this, you would want to um, eliminate that sort of blind left with the island um, to take out the island and make a more straight approach. So you have better sight lines and better um, better view when you're turning um, so you can see everything. The problem with that is it's, it's an historic island, I would say. Yeah. Um, there used to be a granite horse off there and uh, a pump in that island. Uh, it, they, they disconnected it because you shouldn't be drinking the water out of that. So yeah. <laughs> people used to. And if we got rid of it, I'm not sure that would 
be very popular, but uh, I understand. I think it would be better to have a T intersection than this. Is uh, the granite trough still there? I think it's gone. Uh, somebody put in a big granite thing that says Westport or something like that now. But, so there's some sort of like landmark on there. Yeah. Um, so maybe just um, narrowing the approaches and like making sure that there's adequate site distance could also be a solution if you can't get rid of the island entirely. It wouldn't be a complete fix, but there are ways to make what you have safer, mm -hmm. even by a small degree. Yeah, and it's, it's never good on a, a place like that to have people backing into traffic, but um, I don't know what the story is going to be because they haven't filed with the planning board, so I don't know, but. Yeah, so then, unfortunately that's outside of the scope of complete streets. Um, right. That, that would be more of a planning board issue. Right. Julian and I were here um, December 23rd measuring this, the roadway and and it was hard for us to cross the road. There were so many people driving. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And there's more and more people trying to walk around uh, Central Village, and it becomes a problem. It, it's it's impossible to get across this intersection, uh, going north to south or south to north, um, on that side of the street. Okay. All right. I'm just going to add your comment in here. And, and the other one is the the intersection at River Road and Old Harbor Road. Yep, I can pull that picture up in a minute. I have um, yeah. it on the computer. I just realized I left out of my comments that when you um, when you tee off the intersection like that, you're also improving crossing distance for pedestrians and also sight lines too. Mm -hmm. Had the thought in my head, didn't come out of my mouth. So sorry about that. We didn't get a drawn picture of River Road and Old Har Harbor Road, but we I did grab some pictures while we were out in the field. Mm -hmm. Let me just grab them. Okay, here's one right here. This is looking north. Right, so that's coming, that's, you're coming down the big hill. Yep. Uh, and then you have this road coming in from the right at a very obtuse angle. Mm -hmm. And when you stop where your cursor is, there's a stop sign and a stop line right there. And to sit there, and try to look up the hill and see if there's any traffic coming. It's very difficult, mm -hmm. uh, especially when the sun is uh, in the afternoon sun, when you're looking back into the sun and where the town put um, new guardrails up the hill um, on, the, on the east side of Old Harbor Road, yeah. It, that really blocks the view of cars uh, coming down the hill for people at that stop sign. So I don't know what time you took this, but that must have been yep. around noon or something like that. I believe so. 
I think we were out there around noon ten. And if you if you were down at there at two or three o'clock, the sun is going down to the right um, at about a forty five degree angle, and you look back up, and the sun is is right in the roadway. But whatever you do, you can't touch the fork on the road. So, <laughs> yes. So, I, it, it, with a tight spot like that, I don't know what you do, but it's. I mean, the, there's the telephone pole there. The 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 house is on the left hand side there. Pretty short yard. You can't take much of that. Um, and if you try to make it a T, you're going to have to, you'd be going up a hill uh, and going through where the fork is. Do you have suggestions on how to fix that? I took a measurement. I have measurements. I'm going to bring that up so we can see how wide this bottom part is. That's a tricky one for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, really wouldn't want to mess with the fork. It's a neat feature. Um, there, you can do um, more visible or lighted signs, places that you have glare. Um, and then, looks like that might be reasonably wide. So where the road, this right part of the road meets is 33 feet across. Mm -hmm. So the part right here. There's 33 feet across right here. All right. And then it eventually narrows back to the 10, 11 foot lengths. Mm -hmm. So, maybe like a more well defined stopping area or some crosswalks or something like that, and uh, maybe tighten it up a little bit. Unfortunately, there's some spots where you can't just, um, you can't fix everything you want to without destroying the character that you have. Right. But somebody's going to get hurt there. Um, anyway, so leave my comments on there. I think that this is really something that needs to be addressed. Um, I don't know if narrowing by the pole, making that less off to the, to the left, uh, would enable somebody to see further up the road. Okay, yeah, yeah, that that probably would work pretty well. Um, and the more distance you can get between the pole and the edge of the road, the safer you're making things too. Mm -hmm. um, generally, you don't like to see poles that close to the edge. And I think you could narrow it up if it's thirty-three feet. That's pretty wide. Yeah, it is, and so it, but and it makes you be pointing more down the road when you're trying to look back up the road. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you were forced to go at the intersection at a, at a less sharp angle, you might be able to see better. I don't know. Yeah, I have seen other communities that will um, have the end of the road kind of turn a little bit to be to meet the other road at a more right angle, mm -hmm. but you, you would probably lose some of that green space. Um, it also has the added benefit when you do that of slowing cars down as they approach the intersection too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. But you know, people don't stop at the stop sign. They stop further up the intersection because they know the road is up there and not where the stop sign is. So. Yeah, people, people will naturally stop where they need to stop to see. Um, and old standards didn't really take that into account. They tried to make people do what they wanted them to do instead of what, instead of working with people, what people naturally do. So yeah, if you narrowed that approach and moved the stop sign up, you could even do a treatment where you put stop signs on both sides of the road to make them more visible. Um, but also, I, it's hard to tell from this picture, but um, like a a crosswalk or a more well-defined stop line can help with that too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it definitely looks like you have um, 
like an uneven sight line if one side of the road is higher than is not lined up correctly with the, mm -hmm. the other side. Yeah, it's a difficult thing. Um, it's always been difficult. There didn't used to be a stop sign there. Um, and that was really a problem. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Gail mentioned in the chat that the end of Chase Road in Dartmouth has a lighted sign. I think that's a lighted stop sign. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, those. Um, it does. It does, yeah. Those especially help in glare situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to add that comment. Does anybody have any other questions or comments there or maybe locations of future projects they would like to add to this map or to the plan? Uh, I, I think we have a 75% plan for sidewalks in Central Village. Um, um, are you referring to the, the former TIP project or is there a newer yeah, effort there? The, the former TIP project. Yeah, so um, I was involved with that. Um, I think that was almost maybe 10 years ago now. Um, yep. on, the, on the edges, it was um, one of my coworkers was much more involved than I was. Um, unfortunately, designs expire over time. So it likely would need to be at least revisited restructured um it's it's Maybe still a it need it's sad that that project didn't go forward as designed and it would oh. likely be more expensive now you think <laughs> <laughs> uh politics yep okay <clears throat> but so how do we proceed with that we can we apply for funds to uh, complete a new set of plans um you might want to look at doing that through this program instead of doing it through the, the typical TIP process. Um, you might have to phase it because of how expensive it would be, but the standards are different with this program and the TIP and also the time frame. You can get a project done a lot faster through Complete Streets than you can through the TIP process. So we could phase it sort of? Yeah. Um, the funding is lower, but you could also apply for other things like um, a shared streets grant or something like that, too. Um, the TIP process is often a big undertaking for towns, and I, um, if anybody on the line is not familiar with that, that's how federal funding is allocated for the region through the Transportation Improvement Program. Um, and I was on the periphery of that. I was trying to stay as far away from it as I could because it was so, it, it took the committee that um, pushed that through seven years to, to get it to where it was. That's actually fast for a TIP project. Um, they, they take a very long time. The design standards are very strict. Um, not that it's not, it's, it's the most abundant source of funding for things like that that towns can apply for. It's just that project was particularly heartbreaking. I know a lot of people in town spent a lot of time working on that and it got very close. It failed three to two, I believe, at the select board um, after seven years and it was uh, put on the shelf. So you're saying that that, that that design probably has expired by now? I would say so. Um, it, it would be worth reaching out to MassDOT to get their opinion on it, but it, it likely would be expired. Um, design standards for bike and ped through the TIP program have changed since then. So. Okay, so if we wanted to make it a more country sidewalk instead of uh, right on the edge of the road, that would be where it can be away from the roadside. Yeah. It would probably be easier through this system. I would say so. Okay. 
This okay. program cannot fund the design or permitting though. It's just for construction funding. So if you guys have designs, like if you update those ones, then you can apply through this program for the construction funding. Okay, so if we want design plans, we have to do that ourselves? Yes, that's the responsibility of the town to do design plans, but the standards are different. Right. So could we could we use those expired tip plans and say this is what we want to do? Um, that's an excellent question. I wouldn't feel comfortable answering that um, myself. Um, do you know that this program is very similar to the Chapter 90 program, where things need to be submitted in the same way? Um, it would be worth talking to somebody at the Complete Streets program if that's something that could be done or acceptable. And also probably having that conversation in town with the um, Highway Department or Public Works mm -hmm. um, would probably be the best first step for whoever holds those plans. That's a good question. I don't. I think they found them in the. Excuse me, Amy. I think if you're there, I think I'm you here. Yep. Them. Yep. I I have the plans. I sent them over to Sarah yesterday. Um, there's probably about twelve sheets of them. I gotta find the the hard copies, but I have the PDFs. They're from 2012. Yeah. Um. So that would be something that would need to be um, worked out with um, the Complete Streets program. Um, you likely wouldn't need to have as robust a set of plans, but um, I, I really don't want to, I don't want to speak out of term on that. That's a, right. it's more of an engineering question than I can answer. Right. But we already have the plan. <laughs> so You likely wouldn't be starting from scratch at right. the very least. So you you'd know what you want to do and where you want to do it. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gail was sending a, something on the chat if you want to look there. Yep. Gail asked if we can add Sanford Road near Our Lady of Grace to six sidewalk repair. So, yep, we can add that. That was one of the comments that came out of our stakeholder group as well. Um, the town administrator asked if that we could see if we could add that as a project to our plan. So I'm going to add that. <clears throat> I don't know if it's been completed completely or not. I know that there was one issue that we had with uh, uh, the traffic was uh, too fast at the head of Westport. Uh, that's old old county road near the end of uh, Drift Road um, and where the uh, old county goes over the river. Mm -hmm. Right here? Ooh, hold up, zoomed in too far. Right there. Right, and I know that there has been some discussion over the years about narrowing the, the roadways with, uh, with painted lines. And I think something like that was done when the uh, the Watershed Alliance building was completed. That's the biggest building, the, the big building on the right hand side in the middle there. So they they redid some of uh, the sidewalk and the roadway. Um, so I, I see a pedestrian thing down here at Drift Road and Old County Road, but it would be to the to the right up the hill and over to Reed Road uh, or so from Reed Road or from the church actually, the church or the post office um, and back up the hill towards the schools to to calm the traffic. And originally uh, I and others have said to the highway department, we need to narrow the roadways. And he thought, well, that's crazy. You need to widen them. And that's not how you calm traffic. So I don't know what the status of that is. When you're out there, did you measure those 
have we accomplished some of that calming stuff or not? So, yep, we did measure. We actually measured right in front of, um, just to the left of the county store. Um, that still is the wider, the widest from edge to edge. Uh, I can pull up my sheet. I don't know offhand how big like the lanes are, but I, I can pull up my sheet. I know exactly which sheet it is. Let's see, all right. Okay, so Old County. So it would be within this section. We measured from the edge line to the center line, 11 foot two inch, point two, and then 11.3 feet. But the total um, from edge to edge was 29.7, so about 30. So from the edge line to the edge of the road, there was three feet and then four feet. Mm -hmm. And I think we were talking about uh, putting parking on one side or the other to, and then narrow the, the traveled way by doing so. Mm -hmm. I think that we had a report actually from SERPA several years ago. I don't know if you have access to that. But I think that that would be something that we should really reconsider to do and, and really implement it now. I mean, there's, we should have parking in front of the store. Okay. Yeah, I can add that. There is parking across the street, right? At the... There's, there's two or three places in front of the new, the new rehabbed building there, the big building. Um, because before that, it was just an open parking area. Um, so it's sort of right where the O and old is um, on Old County Road. And I think it should be incorporated with a, a larger project to put the sidewalks in up to the school and beyond the school. Okay. That's an excellent idea. And then I think it would be nice to have a parking lot. If you see that corner right, right where the pedestrian is at the end of Drift Road. Yep, right here. Uh, yeah, and there's, there's sort of um, parking along Drift Road. And that, that area to the right of that down to the water is, is sort of a town park slash landing. And uh, people park there, but then walk around the corner to the store or to the kayak place. And there's no sidewalk there. And so you're, you're, ha you're forced to walk out into the roadway because of the parked cars. And I think that's a bad setup. Okay. And I think it probably would be good to have parking, uh, you know, parking areas in front of the church and up and down that road, because on Sundays they park all over the place. And it should be something that is uh, designated for parking and um, help calm the traffic coming from Dartmouth there. And I don't know if there's a sidewalk. There's a, there's a sidewalk on Old County Road up to Reed Road, but I'm not sure how far towards Dartmouth it goes. The sidewalk? Um, so I have from 526 Old County Road. So. Well, I don't know where that is, but you know, if you can be on the church, there's the entrance to the sand and gravel place. Um, and I don't know if there's any sidewalks beyond that. 
So the 526 is right here. So it's a kind of across from the post office. Yep. So that's where we saw the start of the sidewalks then to go to Drift Road. Okay. It probably would be better to, to extend it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And pick up the rest of the neighborhood. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to leave. I'm tardy for a serpent commission meeting. So, all right, thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you, and everybody stay on and keep going. I'm reading Gail's comment in the chat. Um, she said, yes, a more clearly defined parking for drift road, specifically for the landing for boat launches and people that ride bikes um, directed at the high school during the weekends. Does anybody have any other locations or ideas for projects in town? All right, if not, um, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. This, all this material will be online and we're going to be posting the video. But if you want to feel free to think about your comments or locations and then go on afterwards and also participate in that intersection redesign form. And this should be up and for about a month, we'll be posting it um, a, like a deadline date on our website. And then from there, we'll start selecting some of the projects that you guys have identified to us and we can start filling in that spreadsheet and come back at the end of April and go over that list. And then we can create that prioritization plan for which is top priorities for Westport. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you guys, that's awesome. Yes, thank you so much, you guys.